Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. And today, we're going to talk about some of the doors on this ship. Battleship New Jersey has a ton of different types of doors. Uh, loosely, you can break them down into three categories. NTD, WTD, and QAWTD. NTD, uh, I think, just means not watertight door. I feel like there's a W missing in there somewhere, but they tend to be labeled NTD. Uh, and the alternative name for a not watertight door is just a joiner door. So the joiner doors do not separate out watertight compartments, obviously. Water can go around all the edges of this. This door is not structural in any way. Uh, really, it's just a courtesy door. On the other side of this is a warrant officer stateroom. So this is just a partition. This bulkhead isn't watertight. This door isn't watertight. It's just this is plated off from the passageway here. Originally, the Iowa-class battleships were being rushed into service so quickly uh, that there's evidence to suggest that they went out without joiner doors um, in many parts of the ship. And so you often see curtain rod holders over the stateroom doors, uh, which was the wartime expedient to give the officers, warrant officers, uh, and whatnot, some amount of privacy rather than manufacturing metal doors and uh, installing them around the ship. So it helped get the Iowas out there quicker and obviously at some point, whether it was immediately post-war uh, or possibly uh, by the 1950s when they're recommissioned, they go through and they install joiner doors uh, as designed. There's a possibility that uh, because the U.S. Navy broke up a lot of pre-war ships immediately after World War II, that uh, they just were turned things like this back into the inventory and then took them out of the inventory to install on the Iowa-class ships. So there is a small possibility that rather than being bought new in the late 40s or early 50s, that uh, some of these doors may have come from other vessels. We haven't found any specific evidence of this, like scratching paint off and seeing the name of another ship. Um, but there's a possibility. So NTDs, not watertight doors. And then there are two types of watertight doors. WTDs are just watertight doors, and those are the slow-acting sort. We're going to see one later on. Um, they have a bunch of individual handles called dogs that allow you to uh, shut them. And then you have quick-acting watertight doors, like this one right here, which uh, has a lot more going on mechanically, but is a lot quicker to make watertight. Instead of closing eight or ten dogs on the door, turn the wheel, and then the dogs are deployed, and that is pushing the rubber gasket that's in the door up against the unpainted knife edge here, which creates a watertight and airtight seal. So that side of the space floods, this side is fine. That side of the space has a fire, it's not drawing air from this side. So, let's take a walk down the passageway and see what other types of doors we can find. Many of the offices here on second deck have Dutch doors, where you can open the top and the bottom separately. Uh, many of these doors date back a pretty long time. I, I would say that this one was probably on board uh, when the ship was built. There, there's no evidence of a curtain rod uh, overhead. I, I think this office door has been here since the ship was built. Interestingly, in the 1980s, they uh, actually bolted a plate to the door, and you can see some of the uh, fastener holes here, to keep it from being a Dutch door anymore. So rather than installing a new door, they just bolted the two halves together to turn it into uh, a single door. This particular one is cool because at the end of the ship's career, it was being used as the weapons department office. It wasn't like that the whole career. At the very end of the ship's career, it seems like the whole door was painted gray, except for maybe a couple of pieces of artwork up here. But some of the paint started to peel off, and we found uh, other 80s era logos under it. The 1980s were actually our longest commission, uh, and the ship went through a tremendous number of changes over the course of the 1980s. 
Uh, and so one of those changes apparently was one crew painted things like the phalanx gun, the crest, and uh, other symbols on this door. And then later on it was painted over and uh, replaced with the surface warfare symbol and some of the different ratings badges for who worked in here. So as you can see, we're still in the process of removing the paint from uh, the symbol here and the phalanx gun. The, the whole white dome hasn't been uncovered yet. Still a work in progress. So here, as we are approaching the ship's mess decks, we have some doors doubled up. Uh, this way, when you've got a massive number of crew trying to hit the chow line at one time, they've got multiple doors to go through. Uh, because in general quarters, you've got to shut these doors quickly, they've got one side that is a regular watertight door, slow acting with individual dogs, and the other side is a quick acting watertight door. Uh, that way, that if the ship is at general quarters and all of this is locked down, you've still got a quick acting door that if somebody has to move from point to point, they can just go through the quick acting one. And most of the doors along this second deck passageway were replaced with quick acting watertight doors at some point. Uh, these seem like a much newer door than this old type, so I suspect they were changed over maybe in the 60s, but definitely by the 80s. So, uh, for the regular watertight doors, here's how it works. You've already seen the quick acting ones. You have to shut the door, and then you've got to close every single dog to get that seal around the whole door. And then they have a dog wrench or a breaker bar with them. So you can really crank them down and make that knife edge mate with that gasket. Gives me a lot more leverage than I had just doing this by hand. So you go around and do the whole thing. So obviously not very easy to pass through one of these doors uh, if you're a damage control party trying to get to a fire uh, or if you're still at general quarters but you've been authorized to uh, come and get sandwiches from the mess deck to take back to your gun turret. So undogging these ugh, is not a, a quick process at all. One of these doors gets old and warped and you've got to replace it. You don't just replace the door, you crop out the entire door frame with the locking mechanism and all. So likely when they went through second deck and replaced all of these, they cut out the old doors and they brought the whole new mechanism in, door frame, door and locking mechanism, and just welded it in place for the whole shebang. And these things cost a couple grand each. So most of these doors also have a hook and a stop associated with them. That's because we're on a ship that rocks and rolls. So if the store is supposed to be open, we're at a material condition that permits it, then uh, it could be swinging back and forth as the ship rocks. And uh, it really hurts if one of these catches you, especially if, if it's got any force behind it. So speaking of material condition, there are uh, a couple different types of material conditions. And we've covered this in another video. But just as a refresher, all the doors are marked with an X, a Y, or a Z. Uh, and X's tend to be closed most of the time. Uh, Y's, for condition yoke, that's, you know, some of the time it's closed. Z's, you only close during general quarters. So this door is a Y. So interestingly, this door is labeled as a Y. So that would be closed as you start to step up your defensive posture. Like maybe it's a storm at sea and the crew's still allowed to pass through. Uh, but this one is a Z, so it could still be open. Remember, it's quick acting, so you can set that condition Z pretty quickly. And more interestingly, these 80s style stickers are slapped onto uh, an older style brass engraved plate. On this side, the plate is a Y. But on this side of the door, there is a Z sticker, which has been placed on a Y engraving. So they changed what the uh, material condition was for this door at some point in the ship's career. And again, 
uh, this ship has changed a tremendous amount over her career. So here's another interesting uh, variance. Most of the doors on the ship are 26 inches across. Most of the equipment on the ship can break down to 24 inch components so you can move it freely through the ship. In some places, that's not the case. So here, the incinerator, the door is much larger than 26 inches. Um, so you can get trash bags and stuff in there. And here at the butcher shop, the door is also wider than 26 inches. Um, this butcher shop door is almost certainly an original. You can tell by the, the furnishings and, and whatnot on it. And this brings up another interesting dichotomy. Most of the watertight doors on the ship you see are oval shaped. Um, while the joiner doors are all square shaped. What's the deal with that? Well, again, this isn't a watertight bulkhead and uh, this isn't a watertight door. This is more of an enclosed space built into a separate watertight compartment than its own actual compartment. Whereas this does lead to its own actual compartment. Uh, so this isn't structural at all. It is, again, just a courtesy door so you don't have to look in there at guys band sawing cuts of beef. This is structural and having curved edges uh, gives you much greater strength than having square edges. So this is a structural bulkhead and we're holding a tremendous amount of armored weight above us uh, and different equipment and the superstructure mounted overhead. So this has to be able to hold up to that. This sheet metal wall does not. So here at the entrance between the serving line and the mess decks, uh, we have another interesting style of door. Originally, this has both a watertight door, which you can still see here, and a joiner door frame. So at one point, this had a joiner door here. Uh, the mess decks are pretty heavily air conditioned. The galley, because of all the heat they're producing, is not. So that door allowed you to still have an air conditioning boundary without going to a different condition of watertight integrity. By the 1980s, they had added uh, air conditioning to the galley and uh, it was just a pain to have your mess tray and try to get through a joiner door with a, with a line of people here. Uh, and it does have the fittings up top for the uh, self-closing type arms. So when you let the door go, it does shut on you. Uh, and, and so they just removed that entirely, but they never got rid of the door frame. So this type of watertight door, you can tell, is a little bit more built up. Look at where we are. This is the end of the armored deck. So here we've got the unarmored part of the ship, and there is the armored part of the ship. And so this bulkhead is considerably thicker than the other bulkheads around it, and, and so it's got a thicker uh, watertight door. Also, it's got a mechanism to make it extra quick acting. You see this lever sticking out. When this door mates with the door frame here, and notice being armored, it's, it's a different type of knife edge. Here's the raised bit that mates with the gasket. But when uh, this hits that and it closes, as designed, if this thing was being maintained by DCs and was well oiled, when this hits the door frame and opens, it removes a lock here, which would allow the door to close automatically. Uh, as I said, this has stayed here open and stationary for a very long time, so it's not greased enough to do that, but that's what it's designed to do. So we'd be remiss in talking about doors if we didn't also talk about the other sort of opening. Uh, doors, you know what they are, you walk through them. But ships also have hatches like this one. And the hatches are in the decks while the doors are in the walls. Hatches share a lot of similarities with doors. Uh, on the underside, there's a knife edge that's mating with a gasket here. And uh, this is pretty equivalent to a slow acting door. I should mention that uh, the, the brown primer you see on it Obviously not the original color. This should be gray. Uh, th this is in an area where we are doing maintenance right now. Each of these hatches has a slot nearby where a wrench would insert. Most of our wrenches are missing. People take souvenirs. And uh, so when this is closed, you would dog down each of the nuts around it to make it watertight. So how do you get into and out of these hatches if that's the case? 
Well, you've also got scuttles built into most of them, and these are uh, quick acting, unlike the hatch itself. Now, all the hatches on the ship are designed to be opened by a single individual. So this one's relatively thin, uh, one person can lift it. The ones that are armored are counterweighted. Be sure to check the video in the link in the description below to see us actually using one of the counterweighted armored hatches. So, scuttle, you open the wheel, and it pops open. You'll notice there's a wheel on the underside as well. So whether you're coming out from the bottom or in through the top, you can do that. And the ladder's right there. Each hatch also has a JDAVIT standpipe next to it. And this one has been welded over, although you can see where it would have originally had a lid to keep water out. But uh, this is just a standing pipe, and you would set a JDAVIT in here if you were loading cargo down below. A JDAVIT is just that. It is an arm that's shaped like a J that slots into there. When it's not in use, it gets taken off and stored somewhere else. And you can put a block and tackle on it so you can lower cargo down the open hatch. And this is particularly important here. We've got all the refrigeration and mess deck spaces nearby and a ton of birthing compartments. Uh, but just about every hatch you come to, you're going to find a J. David stamp like that. So, uh, before we sign off, there are a couple other types of openings to point out. On the 06 level of the superstructure, as you're going up towards the, the fire control tower, there is a sliding door that for all other intents and purposes looks like a joiner door. Uh, that seems to be the only place on the ship like that, and it does seem like there's enough room for the door to swing open, so I'm not sure why they decide to go with a, a rolling door there. Uh, and then you've got manholes, like this access port here, and many times leading down to fuel tanks in the deck. You've probably seen us crawl through a dozen, uh, and they're not really intended uh, for normal use. You can see they're bolted all the way around to be watertight, and there's a rubber gasket in there. Uh, might have been a felt gasket during uh, World War II, but it's rubber now. Um, so these are manhole accesses to various up tanks, trunks, fuel tanks, whatever the case may be. Uh, but you, you, you're not really using them. And there are also things like portholes and passing windows, which we'll cover at, at a later time. But uh, so here's, here's a little passing window between the butcher shop and the galley, just like all the other openings uh, on the ship between watertight bulkheads, and we know this is a watertight bulkhead because of the watertight doors here, uh, the opening itself has to be watertight. So you'll see that it has dogs around it and a knife edge and a gasket. So what types of these doors have you guys ever used before? Let us know in the comment section down below. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from viewers like you. In particular, the support you guys have given us in the last year has allowed us to go from making one video a week to making multiple videos a week, and, and allowed us to make YouTube a larger part of our jobs. We appreciate that. If you'd like to continue supporting us, there's a link in the description below. Also remember to like, share, and subscribe so that you're notified when we put out all this new content. Thanks for watching.